There are lots of new faces at corporate boards around the world these days, and they're government faces. That's the result of billions in bailouts turning into equity stakes. So is this change an ominous sign of restructuring, or is it an opportunity to make some really important changes? Well, INSEAD professor Ludo van der Heyden has written a paper for strategy and business called Welcome Stateholders. Not stakeholders, but stateholders. Yes, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Shalene. All right, are government people up to being on the boards of really some fairly major corporations? I think they, they could be there as, as really representing the state holding, uh, which is they, they have their interest, which is the public interest. And in that sense, and this is one of the, the main points of the article, is that the, today certainly uh, it's time to sort of bring the state back to the board and get away from that uh, relationship between sort of shareholders and, um, and the employees and especially the, uh, the managers or the senior manager. So there is a definite uh, need for bringing the, the stakeholder back uh, on the board. Now the question is how do you do that? And as you say, you know, uh, are people capable of doing that, especially if they come from government? And I think that's sort of an, an issue to, to think about. Are you, now in your paper you suggest several different uh, issues. At first let me ask you, why did you decide to do this paper? I mean, it does clarify some of the issues that are sort of rattling around in the, in the atmosphere. Yeah, I, I think uh, we were sort of triggered to write the paper with, with my co-author Bob Gogel uh, because they, all the governments were pretty much saying this will be temporary. And, and we feel that uh, this is a major system breakdown and that, uh, as uh, you know, Ram Emanuel said, uh, this is a crisis that's too big to be left unused and this is the time to uh, really do a major breakthrough in, in, in governance. Um, and there is a time to, to do that. And so this is not going to happen if the, stale is gonna, if the state is going to uh, swish in and swish out immediately. So the key point of the article is, is to say we need to change the system. And the state, uh, you know, the public interest should be there, you know, for the lo medium and long term. Well, even if it is temporary, it's still going to be several years before anything yes. really changes in the money. So, I mean, yeah. entire careers have been <laughs> gone yeah, before it, all that. It should be. Uh, and this, I think, is a key issue in the U.S. now, which is there is a view that we're just going back to the old world, that there was a temporary blip, and this was as much Alan Greenspan's fault as, as, uh, as the, the financial uh, people. And so, you know, a Greenspan is gone. Uh, soon the banks are back to health. Uh, Lehman Brothers is gone. So let's go back to, uh, uh, to the previous world with, with a few people less. We shouldn't go back to the previous world because the previous world wasn't a good world. I mean, the, the whole world is now paying for, for what is, um, was really a, a, a big, not a failure of capitalism, which some people like in France, they mention it's a problem of capitalism, but really a failure of governance of financial institutions and financial market. So in your paper, you make several points that you'd like to see, that this is an opportunity rather than something that's draconian and to be feared. Yeah. Um, give me a couple of the points. The first point is you cannot rely on the private uh, sector actors to correct governance failures because many people, uh, too many people benefit from it and, and that is sort of the welcome stakeholder which is this is part of your, of your fundamental mission and uh, it is very important that capital markets work well and part of the capital markets working well is that the public has full trust and the investors have full trust that the market is working well and that is a, a, a thing to uh, embrace. An immediate implication is uh, governments uh, should have governance expertise. They should know you know when companies are well governed and not well governed so there's a quality control function of governments and uh, again it could, that shouldn't be left to, to, uh, to the people themselves. And now the more difficult question, uh, but the more difficult question is how do you do it? Uh, but you can't get to that question unless you agree that that's an essential function. And, and we understand that um, a key failure was a, a mindset issue, which is in the US, this is a, what I would call the end of the Reagan area or the end of, of, of complete liberalism, which is that regulation was even outsourced to, to the markets with some of the rating agencies becoming more customer friendly. So the, the kind of a cancer of, of, of driving greater profits 
from understanding the customer better, uh, from uh, bringing products to the market that were sort of toxic. All of that, I think, was a, was a great mess. It's a shame, actually, and is a setback for, for, or is a danger to capitalism. Let me ask you a question about bubbles, because in the article you talk about that should be the, one of the roles of government should be to recognize bubbles, and that smacks of a cartel to me. I'm sorry, but that's, I mean, aren't bubbles part of the free market? Uh, well, this, I think, is a very good question. And, and yesterday I was at a conference in France where people sort of said bubbles are good because, you know, I think you need to crash the bubble. So our view would be completely the country. Bubbles uh, are bad. Bubbles is basically uh, value created on virtual things, on wrong assumptions, uh, on views that things will always go up. So one of the, se one of the tasks of governments would be how do we actually recognize a bubble from what is actually an increase in value. So if the share price increases uh, of oil, for example, it's maybe because oil is running out. That's not a bubble. That is, that is really uh, um, uh, increase in value. Oil is getting scarcer, scarcer, and that is not a bubble. When actually you know, the Hunt brothers were actually cornering the silver market or whatever market it was, then that is a, that is a, a, a monopoly bubble, that is a, a, that is a construction, and that construction should not be allowed. Speaking of bubbles, some of these financial institutions are going to come out of this, already have come out of this, really huge. I mean, Bank of America, for one, is, is enormous, Citibank, and they have huge government stakes. Certainly Citibank is, what, 80% owned by the yes. U.S. government? Yes, I mean, what just... Just governing, just managing something of that size, let alone corporate governance, what challenges are these? Well, these, uh, I would join here the views uh, were recently expressed by the governor of the, of the Bank of England, Mervyn King, who said, you know, too big. Uh, it, it's not healthy uh, that, that some institutions are too big. And, and so I think uh, the, the word that has been coined is, is too big to fail. I would add another one, or two other ones, too big to manage, and, and sort of related with that is too, too, too big to govern, which is you just, from the board perspective, you don't even know what you're supervising. And, and I think we should introduce the notion of too big to be governed. Uh, and I think that's sort of an idea was recently promoted by Mervyn King, which I, I feel uh, is, is something that wasn't qualified. And some of these institutions are too big, and so the government has created these huge monsters. I mean, you mentioned one, uh, Bank of America. Citigroup is actually a monster that's been created now for, for quite a while, and I think the government should have a view. Is Citigroup too big? I mean, most people now, thanks to the bubble, say yes. Uh, but now the question is, what's the action? Uh, and that's where welcome stakeholder. Please get in. You know, uh, cut this 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 firm into pieces that are not too big to be to to be governed, and that were market forces, which are creative forces, also of corporate destruction. Uh, market forces will play, and so that uh, you know you're you're doing the opposite. You let the market forces operate, and and that will always go and induce some corporate restructuring, which everybody agrees is, is relatively faster than when the government comes in. Do you think the government might look around and see some former financial services executives, because there are a lot of them looking for work right now, and ask them to act on their behalf on boards? Is yes. This, and is this good or bad? Is this lettuce I, I by think that is, I think it's very good, depending on who the people are. Uh, but I think that's one of the suggestions we have, is that the financial sector uh, has really caused a big cost on, on the rest of the world and the rest of the industrial sector. The real economy has really suffered. And there is a need for credibility of the financial sector and, and recover a notion of service. And one way to recover the notion of service is indeed for former final financial executives to step back and represent the government without huge bonuses and surplus money, but as an act of public service with a due generosity and, and sort of saying, you know, we're not bad people. We're, we're there to help the economy. And, and I, we feel that there is actually a role for former financial executives who are stepping out of the, f the competitive fray and the competitive hassles to step back and say, now I want to return to my sector, to the economy, work for the government. Because I think the worst thing to be doing is to ask government people who have no clue about business, let alone governance in business, which is a very, very difficult subject, to ask these people to come in. They're just going to create a further mess. So it's a whole other area of teaching, too, I would imagine. So this is why, you know, I've, I've, with some colleagues, uh, we're actually preparing a new, a new governance course, which would not be 
a one-day induction into governance, but there's a real course, which is what is it that former managers, because most of these people would be former managers, what is it that former managers need to know in order to uh, become good directors? And the first thing they need to know is you're not a manager. Uh, there is management. Management is there to manage. You're there to supervise. So to help this transition of mindset, I think a course would be very good. And now the question is what skills does the supervisor need because the supervisor isn't doing the work it's it's the it's the board it's the management board that does the the work uh, the other immediate implication is that you know we need to go immediately like many countries have done uh, but but not not the us and not necessarily in france either uh, is the separation from from the chairman who's the chief governance officer uh, who's the chief supervisor to distinguish that person from the chief executive officer and, and to have a separation in these roles. Okay, well your paper is called Welcome Stateholders. It's in Strategy and Business. And Ludo, thank you very much for being with us on NCN Knowledge. Anytime, Shelley.